Oh wow! The view from here is amazing! How did you ever find this place? I have been here many times before. Makes sense, I guess. A cold breeze had me rubbing my arms around myself in an attempt to retain body heat. The cat must have noticed it too, as he pulled me to his side again before commenting. For warmth, I decided not to say a word this time as I laid my hand onto his shoulder and felt his arm circle around me. Just one more memory, it wouldn't be too bad. I spent the next morning packing my bags in preparation to go home. I'm going to miss this place. A knock at my door startled me out of my thoughts. I opened it to see a man standing there with my phone in hand. The games are over so we can have this back. He handed me my phone. Now, if you could please hand over your tokens from yesterday games, I can take them to be counted. Yeah, sure. I quickly grabbed the tokens from my dresser and handed them to him. So, uh, when will the winners be announced? Tonight at the ball. Good luck, Miss C. With that, he threw on his heel and walked away. It's really over. I closed the door before glancing my phone. Three missed calls. I dialed the number I knew by heart and waited for the person on the other side to pick up. Emma, hey, I honestly didn't expect to hear from you right now. I mean, you'll be back home tomorrow. Mira, what's wrong? Do I need to beat someone up? I laugh at the seriousness in her voice. No, it's nothing like that. Then what is it? You sound sad. I don't like it when you're sad, I just, I think I might have done something I regret. D did you have a one night stand? What? No, get your mind off that good for once. Oh, come on, you know you love my good or mine. I love you, but I'm not sure about the last part. Hey, you gotta take the whole package, no refunds. I sighed thinking about what she had just said. Hey, what's wrong? That was supposed to make you laugh, not sigh. Well, it's just that I think I might have falling in love. What? But instead of letting him in, I completely ran away from him. Emma, why? I was too afraid. Afraid of what? Getting my heart ripped apart if he decided it wasn't worthy of him? I think it's... I think... I think I broke his heart instead. Emma, it's just... He's an actor and I'm just me. But if he likes you, then surely... But does he like me? Or does he like who he thinks I am? He doesn't know what my background is like. Fairy tales don't exist in real life, Mira. This isn't one of those movies. Well, he would be an idiot if he cared about your background. You're the cutest, sweetest person in the world. You are great, good to boot. I smiled at her enthusiasm. Eric said the same thing. That if you really cared, then it wouldn't matter. Guess I really should have taken the chance when I had it. But it's too late now. It's never too late for love! You sound just like Eric. I sound like one of the greatest movie stars of all time. That's a compliment if I ever heard one. Well, if things don't work out. I'll have your favorite movie and two cartons of ice cream waiting for you when you get home. Actually, they'll be waiting even if things do work out, but still. Nothing is going to change, Mira. You don't know that for sure. Yeah, whatever. I talked to Mira a bit longer before we said our goodbyes and went back to packing. When I pack all my clothes, I pause and look wistfully at the cow and keep it all sitting side by side on my bed. I swallowed the lump in my throat as I gently picked them up and held them to my chest for a moment, before placing them into my suitcase. I glanced at the clock and let out a sigh. It was time to get ready for the ball. When it was time, a servant knocked on my door to escort me to the barroom. As I walked through the corridors, I couldn't help but remember the excitement of the last two weeks. I'm really going to miss this place. As the doors opened, I was met with the now familiar sight of a crowd of beautifully dressed people milling around. I look around for my teammates. I spot Mr. Bandages leaning against the wall, and Mr. Wolf blushing firstly in the middle of a crowd of women. As for the count, I couldn't see him anywhere. I walked over to Mr. Bandages. So, where's the count? I don't think he would miss the ball. Just because you can't see him doesn't mean he isn't around. This place is huge. I guess you're right. The light suddenly dim as a spot I illuminated a single figure, Eric. Good evening to all of my guests. I would once again I'd like to thank all of you for attending this event of mine. It wouldn't have been the same without every single one of you here. I would also like to thank my staff for being so understanding and working so hard ensuring 
the games run as smoothly as they did. Now, as some of you have already figured out, this is the last annual Valdemar Spectacular that will be hosting. A murmur ran through the crowd. I look up at Mr. Bandages to see his unhappy, silent expression. It's truly been an honor for me. If anyone else wishes to pick up the tradition, by all means do so. Invite me and I'll gladly join the games. Just don't ask me to host them. Tomorrow's laugh around for the crowd. I'm afraid I've gotten too old for this. Well, that's enough of that. Please everyone, enjoy this final night. I will announce the winner of this year's games in a few hours. Happy Halloween everyone! I left Mr. Bandages to grab a plate of food. As I walked through the bar room, I constantly kept an eye out for the Count's black cape or spiky hair for the crowd. One or two times I could have swore I saw him out of the corner of my eye. When I turned, he was gone. I noticed the thick crowd that surrounded Eric wherever he went. His eyes met mine for a moment and I smiled at him. A strange expression crossed his face, but I took it his sleeve had him glancing away from me and to one of the young women at his side. Poor Eric, it must be hard being a host. I returned back to my search for good food and the camp. It was over an hour later that I started to feel disheartened by the fact I hadn't found any signs of him. Where is he? I leaned against the wall and let out a frustrated sigh. It was then that I noticed the familiar flutter of a black cape and the old familiar outfit walking nearby. Count! I called to him without thinking. He quickly swirled around my coat and our eyes met. I watched his eyes wide and shocked before he turned back around and walked away so fast that he might as well have been running. I froze. What? What was I expecting, anyway? Yesterday was fun, but, but it didn't change anything. I felt something wet stream down my cheek and touched the tears that I couldn't stop. No, I can't break down here. Not in front of everyone. I turned ahead for the nearest exit. The tears made my vision blur and I knocked into a few guys on my way out, but at the time I couldn't care less. A hand suddenly gripped my shoulder and spun me around. What's going on? You nearly knocked me over back there. I looked down at the floor. Sorry, I just I just needed some fresh air. Come on then, you're headed the wrong way if you want fresh air. The balcony is this way. He led me to a small secluded balcony just off the side of a bar. He let out an annoying noise as he starts by removing the bandages on his head. What are you? Here, wipe your face. He shoved the bandages into my hands and I gratefully used them to wipe my tears. So, what happened anyway? Last time I saw you, you were happily stuck in your face. I was too upset to even be affected by his statement. Um, I saw the count. Wait. You actually saw him? Yeah, and then he ran away. Not that I blame him, but... But how that idiot? He turned around the leaf and then hesitated and turned back to me. Just... just stay here, okay? Don't move. Not for anything. Not even food. After saying that, he turned on his heel and left the balcony. 